10 years ago, I started my pre-med journey as a freshman at UCLA. I spent 343 hours in a blue polo and khaki pants as a generic hospital volunteer. I became a medical assistant and the mentorship program director for the biomedical research program. All things I thought I was supposed to do because medical schools wanted to see it. None of it mattered and so I changed things. Today, I'm a doctor. I'm an anesthesiology resident in New York City. I've also helped thousands of pre-meds get into their dream med school. I've learned what pre-med activities med schools truly care about. And more importantly, here are the five they are tired of seeing. Activity number one, I f hate Saturday morning. Every week on Saturday at 7 a.m., I had a four-hour shift that would make me feel like the smallest person in the world. I'd show up, generic blue polo, generic khaki shorts, and nobody ever knew my name. Maybe once every hour, I'd be asked to grab water for room 17 or warm blankets for room 21. And then when 11 a.m. came around, I left and no one noticed. Adcoms know that you don't learn anything from being a hospital volunteer. And I'm here to say that you don't have to start at the bottom of the the totem pole or put in your hours like we all did learn from my mistakes and spend time in places where you're truly valued and the places where you're valued ad comms will value too if you feel like you have no idea where to start take a look at real strong extracurriculars that were accepted to real medical schools we have eight full amcas applications filled with extracurriculars that were accepted to the best programs in the country over 13,500 pre-meds are now part of our community to join Click the application database link in our description box below now. Activity number two, anything times zero equals zero. I vividly remember as a freshman going to this club, Flying Samaritans. They do fantastic community work in Tijuana. The lecture hall was packed and then the meeting got started when they introduced their executive board. And out of the side door, 20 pre-meds came out. And so I sought out every leadership position that I could. At times, it felt like the Hunger Games. You were trying to plead to your undergraduate peers why you deserved XYZ leadership position. Ultimately, I became the president of Brainsport. And Stacy became the vice president for AMSA. And Steve became the content director for the College Bound program. And no med school cared. That's because a leadership position is a title. You can call yourself anything you want. The name itself doesn't have any inherent value. Leadership is not the goal. It is a multiplier. If your organization did nothing, the leadership multiplier times zero is still zero. But now if your organization made serious impact, being a leader positively multiplies that impact and you stand out. Next, we're gonna talk about the most common clinical experience I see. Ironically, it's also my least favorite clinical experience to read about. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how adcoms feel about it. But before that, if you're applying to medical school in the next year or two, you don't wanna make the wrong decisions, either in choosing your extracurriculars or in writing about them. Our pre-med catalyst students that submit their applications on time have a 92% acceptance rate. That's double the national average. And our results are because we work so closely with our students. In fact, we can only take four students per month until we're full. If you'd be interested in getting into the strongest programs in the country, click the application cycle advising link down below to book a free strategy call before we're full for the cycle. Activity number three, chief complaint. One of my least favorite things to read on a med school application are phrases like goal-directed medical therapy and treatment plan for Barrett's esophagus. Pre-meds believe that adcoms want to see someone who understands medical terminology, chief complaints, and BU endocrinine ratios, and pitting edema. Medical school will teach you medicine. That's what it's for. And so, medical schools are not looking for people who know medicine already. In fact, you look a little corny throwing out medical terms to real practicing doctors. Scribing or being a medical assistant are the poster child clinical experiences that often lead to this type of writing. They can be fantastic clinical experiences where you're actively caring for real patients with real stories. But when you share your time in the office, focus more on the people and less on the medicine. Every day, re-applicants send me their unsuccessful medical school applications. In clear as day, the writing highlights just how much medicine and medical terminology that the pre-med already knows. That's a red flag, and this attention to details matter. It separates pre-meds who get into medical school from those who do not. If you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, it would be an honor to support you. But we just don't have the bandwidth to support more than four students per month. Click the application cycle advising link to book a free strategy call before we're full. 
Activity number four, Nicaragua. Many pre-meds feel frustrated that in their extracurriculars, they don't get to do things. And so when you as a pre-med get to interview your own patients, talk to doctors about treatment plans, or hell, scrub into surgery, that is the gold standard extracurricular. This couldn't be farther from the truth. And it's unfortunately what makes many pre-meds enticed by global health extracurriculars. Here, you're asked to do more because of the resource poor environment, which to me is ethically questionable at best. In reality, most ad comms find this to be a soft red flag, especially if the rest of your application has nothing to do with global health. You're practicing out of scope, and most often the writing about global health paints you or the doctors as these heroes of the third world. All these things do not sit well with modern ad comms. Activity number five, zebrafish fatty acid metabolism. Medical school admissions is actually extremely simple. Now, simple doesn't mean that it's easy. For example, the most common question ad comms will ask is, oh, that's interesting. Why did Mike decide to do that? And what do you think they assume when the rest of your application has nothing to do with nutrition? Not all research is the same. And to be clear, you don't need to publish in Nature or Cell. You also don't need for everything in your life to be centered on nutrition or cardiology or Vietnamese immigrants or whatever theme that you're trying to build. But you do need to be able to answer the question, hey, this is interesting. Why did you decide to do zebrafish fatty acid metabolism research? And unfortunately, your answer cannot be because this is the only lab I could get into and I thought medical schools wanted me to do research. Take a look at your extracurriculars and make sure you're not making any of these fatal mistakes. And now that you know which extracurriculars to avoid, these are the four core extracurriculars you must have. That video is here. Thanks. Goodbye.